good morning right i hope you all are doing well and also taking good care of audit right that you are studying the subject well right so in this particular video we'll be discussing another set of mcqs which have been released by icai for the ca final right so one set of mcqs we've already discussed now in this video we'll be discussing one more set of mcqs issued right so which mcqs are we discussing right now so if you come to the icai website to the board of studies knowledge portal right there you have the sample questions for 3070 assessment for the new course right in that you have the sample questions 3 yes sample questions 3 right so the file is right this particular this year you've been included in the audit team with a portfolio of new non profit not for profit organization right so these particular mcqs we are discussing right now obviously goes without saying that applicable for both the old course and the new course students okay and this particular set of mcqs you will see it's more of vouching verification types like you know how will you check the valuation <coughs> valuation of an asset or how will you check the occurrence of the revenue or how will you check the property plant equipment or the trade receivables trade payables so when you start looking at the mcq it reminds you oh, is this intermediate or is it final but yes certainly it is for ca final the mcq is more regarding the it's uh, the style of the mcq is more of vouching verification and these ones which we will discuss okay right so let's begin with the first one i have already told to my students to all those who are seeing this particular video that you need to focus more on the mcqs which have been released by icai right and the more the mcqs that you will see the more the knack you will develop the more i think your guesswork will be correct okay right so we'll re let's read question number 1 right you might have gone through an experience where you read a particular mcq then you gave some wrong answer then you found out ki which is the correct answer and then that time you were convinced okay why my answer was wrong and why this answer is correct and then after few days when you would have again seen that mcq again again you might have got lost you know you had some faint memory that okay i had thought something wrong but it was something else okay so that is again a stage of preparation that means your preparation is not at a, it needs to go further okay right so you have to do more rounds it's not only that you see it once okay the complicated one the ones which you do it right in the first go i think those you may just quickly revise but where you go wrong or where there is confusion or where there is a concept or there is some technical thing those you should mark it as very important or you know revise again types and see those mcqs frequently right so let's read question number 1 this year you were included in the audit team with portfolio of few not for profit organization mj hospital was one such non for profit organization with the year ended 31st march 2018 mj hospital was government funded organization and was obliged to deliver value for money as a result you were aware that many of the internal controls in mj hospital will be focused on providing the best service possible at the lowest price which of the following controls may not be implemented by mj hospital so which may not be implemented why because it is a not for profit organization right they want to give the best possible service at the lowest price right so time card clock clocking in to ensure that the employees including the resident doctors are only paid for those hours worked right so if the employees are the resident doctor should be paid only for the hours worked there should be a time card clocking system for that strict controls over the authorization of overtime to ensure that it is only worked where really needed so wherever required it should be done there are any restrictions imposed by the objectives and powers given by the hospitals governing documents right so restrictions imposed by the governing documents say the trust deed or so of the mj hospital a recognized plan of the organization structure clearly showing the areas of responsibility and the line of authority and reporting right so what is first internal control time card clocking right for paying the salary right then strict controls over the authorization of the overtime so i don't think this will affect the services best possible service which they want to provide to the people 
right then a recognition then there are restrictions imposed by the objective so any restrictions or the internal control should be such rather this is not a point of internal control itself what does it say which of the following control may not be implemented so first one should be implemented second one should be implemented and a proper organization structure that is delegation of authority and responsibility even that should be defined right so the correct answer for this one is c right c need not be there and rather if you read c carefully that's not an internal control at all and they have just added some weird different point over there okay right then coming to question number 2 right i hope you are all yes paying attention right the management of abc recruitment limited has approached rk and associates to conduct the audit for the year 31st march 2018 Being a recruitment company, it has vital personal information of prospective candidates who are looking for job opportunities through this company. Also, ABC keeps information about the various job offers from different companies. You are currently looking at the controls present to protect the company's vital information. Which of the following is the best program for the protection of a company's vital information resources from computer virus? so how do you save a computer from virus i think we know something called as antivirus software the moment we read this okay some mac app or some net protector software right so what does it say you verify the policy document which has stringent corporate hiring policies for staff working with computerized function i think this won't help them with computer virus second one you observe that there is an existence of a software program for virus prevention seems okay so first one is obviously out you have also verified that there are prudent management policies and procedures instituted in conjunction with technological safeguards so it says management policy with the virus protection software technological safeguards looks okay you identified that there are physical protection devices in use for hardware software and the library facilities but obviously it has to go hand in hand with the management policies right so more appropriate over here looks is the c answer right the c management policies along with the technological safeguards okay right next one as the external auditor of olive company you have performed analytical procedures which have highlighted a 36% increase in purchases compared to the previous period olive company manufactures tools required for heavy machinery and in the year under audit uh, is in the year under audit 2018 which further audit procedure would you perform in response to this right so increase in purchase by 36% as compared to the previous period right you want to check the purchases right for a sample of purchase invoice around the year end inspect the dates and compare with the dates of the goods received note and the dates recorded in the purchases and payables to confirm the application of correct cut off i think they have very nicely defined the audit procedure and you know, take a few purchase invoices inspect the dates and compare with the dates of the goods received note and the dates recorded in the purchases and the payable to confirm the application of the correct cut off right trace a sample of shipping documentation to purchase invoices and into the purchase and the payable ledger right so you start from the shipping when the goods were shipped to purchase invoice and then to the purchases and the payable ledger but shipping may be done later also though the you know what you say the goods might have been received earlier later all right for a sample of purchase right for a sample of purchase transactions recorded in the ledger vouch the purchase invoice back to supplier order and the shipping documentation so now you take pick up the ledger vouch the purchase invoices ledger you see some purchases invoice invoice to supplier order and to the shipping documentation and for a sample of purchase invoices examine for proper classification into purchase account okay prima facie these questions are more difficult as compared to the other types okay this when it comes to the uh, vouching verification type i certainly agree they are more complicated okay but i think i'll surely go for point number 1 right so when i this if i decide i have to go for point number 1 so obviously c and d is out okay so now it is like whether to combine one with two or one with three right what does it say trace a sample of shipping documentation to purchase invoice and third one for a sample of purchase transactions recorded in the ledger so 
so i think purchase transactions recorded in the ledger from there going to the invoice and the supplier order and the shipping documentation would be more correct right so that is why the correct answer would be b right that is why the correct answer would be b okay right yes paying attention right you are the mid you are in the middle of the audit of one of your client me and company for 2018 following is the bank reconciliation statement for 2018 balance as per bank statement deposits outstanding and less outstanding check balance as per the bank in the general ledger 31st march 2018 which of the following procedure would not be followed okay now would not be followed to verify the bank reconciliation statement right so balance as per bank add less balance as per books okay right for the to verify the bank reconciliation statement verify by checking pain slips that the uncleared banking deposit outstanding were paid in prior to the year end and review they were quickly cleared quickly after the year end so obviously we will check the add items verify that the year end balance per the general ledger according to the reconciliation agrees with the general ledger account so obviously the general ledger balance in the reconciliation should match with the account scrutinize the cash book and the bank statement before and after the period and for exceptional entries or transfers which have a material effect on the balance shown to be on hand i think this doesn't look to be related to the brs right agree the balance let's see the fourth one agree the balance as per the bank statement as shown under reconciliation to the bank statement so obviously bank state balance as per bank statement we will reconcile with the balance shown in the bank statement right so we will check for the add items we will check for balance as per books we will check for balance as per the bank right so obviously the incorrect answer over here the procedure which would not be followed so the answer for us over here is going to be c right which is going to be the answer c next one five you are an audit senior of ghesas and company and are currently performing the final audit of bingham company for the year 2018 the company is a manufacturer and retailer of the table lamps the current audit senior is ill and you have been asked to complete the audit of payroll in their absence on arrival at the head office of bingham company you determine the following data from a review of the current year and the prior period audit files right as a 31st march the company had 350 employees on april 1 10% of the staff were made redundant effectively due to effective immediately due to discontinuation of a product line all remaining staff received 5% pay rise right so they had 350 they removed 10% remaining they got 5% pay rise over the course of the year sales level met performance targets which resulted in bon fixed bonus of 800 being paid to each employee on 31st march 2018 The following audit evidence have been gathered relating to the accuracy of the wages and salaries of Bingham Limited. Right proof in total calculation performed by an audit team member, written representations from the directors confirming the accuracy of wages and salary, verbal confirmation from the finance director of Bingham Company confirming the accuracy of wages and salary. So written representation, verbal confirmation. right and recalculation of the gross and net pay for a sample of employees by an internal audit team member of bingham and company what is the order of reliability of the audit evidence starting with the most reliable evidence first right so reliability of audit evidence should remind us of sa 500 you know evidence in written form is more reliable than oral evidence evidence obtained directly from the third party is more reliable than that obtained from the client or through any inference right so now what are the starting with the most reliable evidence right so what is the most reliable evidence we know out of these four written i know which would be obviously more most reliable written evidence right so what is going to be the first one over here written evidence right that is going to be more reliable as compared to the oral one so these two if we uh, compare these two written is going to be more reliable than the verbal then proof in total calculation performed by an audit team member so has this been calculated by the client no this has been calculated by the auditor so obviously it's going to be more reliable and recalculation of the gross and net payable net pay for a sample of employees by an internal audit team member of bingham and company 
right so this has been calculated by bingham and company but it has been calculated by an internal audit team member of bingham and company right so now first which is done directly by the auditor that is going to be most reliable right so one is going to be most reliable right so obviously c and d is out right fourth one see if you see the other two options fourth one by an internal audit team member cannot be the most reliable right so which is going to be the most reliable one now you have to decide whether one two three four or one four two three right so proof in total calculation performed by an audit team member that's going to be one Re written representation verbal confirmation but these are just representations here there are recalculations of the gross and net pay for a sample of employees right done by an internal audit team member so that is also more of you know in writing done by the and it's not a representation it is a recalculation right so next is going to be four and then after that you have written and then you have the oral right so which is the correct answer for this one b right which is the correct answer b okay right so it takes time no to do the mcqs okay right yes pay attention okay yes there is no thought coming to your mind no negative thought you know that you have to go through the mcqs okay your firm has been appointed as the auditors of stewart limited a well established consumer goods manufacturing company during the audit you were provided with various oral representation during the meetings and the discussions while finalizing the audit you requested the man requested the management to provide such representations in writing the management has however informed you that they are not accustomed to providing any representations to the external auditor in writing the management is of the view that it has provided full access to whatever records documents and evidences were available with it without any exception and that now it is the auditor's responsibility to correlate the same with the oral representation what would be your response to the above right so management say that we've given you all the data now why you want written representation we are not accustomed to providing any representation in writing right what would be your response agree with the management never and we don't need to read further since you've been provided full access to whatever records documents evidence were available with the management without any exception never document that management gave oral representation in audit working paper and issued uh, an issue unmodified opinion see the title of sa 580 is written representation it is not oral representation no right so out after corroborating the audit evidence consider this as a scope limitation and then consider to express a qualified or a disclaimer or reassess the continuation of engagement with the audit client and integrity of the management is in question this looks like case study ha na so this seems to be okay but i have to read the d also give unmodified opinion and include no no this is filler and include the observation and other matter paragraph stating that the written representations of the concerned matters could not be obtained no 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 right so the correct answer over here would be c right so an easy one rather right so i told you see these ones are more easy as compared to how to check existence and how to check valuation and when you have to select out of 1 2 3 4 right question number 7 the year end audit of your client alpha company began shortly after the reporting period 2018 alpha company deals in manufacture and retailer of stationery items last year you had worked on the non current assets this year you requested your manager to give you the work on the revenue you have been given a list of procedures to carry on revenue and you have decided to prioritize the those which deal with the key assertion of accruals The revenue for the current year has increased by 10% from the previous year. Which of the following substantive procedure provide evidence over the occurrence assertion for revenue? Right. So what they are talking about the occurrence assertion for the revenue. Right. Yes. One, two, three, four. Compare. So we have to check for occurrence of revenue. compare the reported revenue figure to the budget and to the previous year investigating any significant differences so they are talking about performing an analytical procedure which i think is not a bad idea but right? generally we keep on performing the analytical procedures right generally we perform the analytical right select a sample of goods dispatch note and agree to invoices in the sales day book 
right? So you have to check whether the sales transaction has really taken place. So starting point, take a sample of the goods dispatch note and agree to the invoices in the sales day book. Okay, third one, select a sample of invoices from the sales day book and agree to GDNs of Alpha company. I think procedure number three is more correct. See, earlier also we said starting from the purchase ledger rather than starting from the shipping documentation. So here also I would say rather than starting from the goods dispatch note, better to start with the sample of invoices from the sales day book. Right, then select a sample of invoices and recalculate the invoiced amount agreeing to the price list shared by the finance director of Alpha Company. This procedure would have been more correct had I wanted to check the accuracy. Right now, what do I want to check? The occurrence. Right, what do I want to check is the occurrence. Right, so one analytical procedure I would perform. Right, and then second, what did I tell you? Right, that you have to starting point would be better from the books rather than starting with the goods dispatch note or the shipping documentation. Right, so obviously C and D is out. Right, so out of this one and three. Right, so the correct answer over here is A. Right, is that clear to everyone? Okay, next one. You are an audit senior of Paintsy Accountants and are currently conducting the audit of Stalwart Company for 2018. Below is an extract from the list of supplier statements as of 2018 held by the company and by corresponding payable ledger balances at the same date along with some commentary on the noted differences. Right, so AB company supplier statement is showing how much balance? 90,000. Payables ledger? 70,000. A CD company supplier statement is showing 1,85,000 whereas in your books it is shown only 1,15,000. So there is under recording of liability as per your books. Prima facie it looks like. AB and company the difference in the balance is due to an invoice which is under dispute due to which faulty goods which were returned on 29th of March 20,000 rupees. The balance in the the difference in the balance is due to the supplier statement showing an invoice dated on 27th March for rupees 70,000, which was not recorded in the financial statements until after the year end. The payable clerks has advised the audit team that the invoice was not received until 3rd of April. Right. The audit manager has asked you to review the full list of the trade payable and select balances on which supplier statement reconciliations will be performed. Which of the following statement is correct in respect of including or excluding from your sample? Right. So which of the following is correct? Exclude with material balances at the year end. Right. So material balances at the year end, you exclude it from your audit procedure. Is this correct? No, this is not correct. This is incorrect. What does it say? Which is correct? So is this correct? No, this is incorrect. Exclude suppliers which have a high volume of business at Stalwart and company. Material balances. Will you include or exclude? You will include, right? So they are saying exclude. So this is also incorrect. Right. Include major suppliers, suppliers with nil balances at the year end. So though the balance at the year end is outstanding is as nil, Though the balance at the year end is nil, it says still you include those in your sample, the major suppliers. Because say big transactions taken place during the year, amount has been paid during the year. So no balance as of 31st of March. But it says even that you should take it in your sample. Right? So this seems to be correct. But first let me read the D1. Include suppliers where the mass statement agrees to the ledger. Include the suppliers where the statement where, where the statement agrees to the ledger. Right? So where the statement is agreeing to the ledger, those also will you include? It says no. You what you have to do? You have to prepare the supplier statement reconciliation. Right? What you need to prepare is the supplier statement reconciliation. So include suppliers where the statement agrees to the ledger. Incorrect. Why? Because those they are already telling. Right, so which is the one which is correct over here? C1. Right, C. Right? So include major suppliers with nil balances at the year end. Will you include those? Yes, that is correct. Right, does everybody agree with this? Point number, yes, MCQ number 8. Right, coming to the ninth one. Right, coming to the ninth one. The audit work of Amrut and company is underway for 2018. Your audit manager asked you to look at the completeness of the trade payable. The supplier statement balance for one of its sub entity supplier PR and company showed a difference of 62,000 higher than that recorded in the payable ledger balance. So again, payables are under recorded. 
which of the all following audit procedure should be performed in relation to the balance with PR and company to determine if the payable balance is understated. Right, so where the payables are understated. Inspect the goods received note to determine when the goods were received. Right, so to check when the goods were received accordingly the period in which they should be recorded. Inspect the purchase order to confirm it is dated before the year end. See purchase order doesn't matter, the purchase invoice matters to us. Review the post year end cash book for evidence of payment of the invoice. Right, so evidence of payment of the invoice post the year end. No. Send a confirmation request to PR company to confirm the outstanding balance. Right now, what does it say? The supplier statement balance is already showing a difference of 62,000. And in the books, it is understated. So now you want to see that it should not happen that for goods which have actually been received have not been recorded into the books. Right. So the correct answer over here would be A. Inspect the goods received note to determine when the goods were received. So if they were received later, no need to record. If they were received before 31st of March, it has to be recorded. Otherwise, it would be understatement. Right? Generally, confirmation looks more tempting, but that's not the correct answer for this one. Right. Coming to the next one. Question number 10. One of your team members has taken leave for a final exam due in 15 days. And how many days yours is due? Right, she was working on the accrual balance of Kersey and company which could not be completed before she went on study leave. The audit manager has asked to complete the task on accrual. For the year ended 2018, there has been an increase in the accruals by 15% as compared to the previous year. Which of the following procedures should be performed to determine if the accruals are accurate, valued, accurate, uh, are valued and allocated properly? Right, so again they are talking about the accruals, right? Uh, accruals, right? The revenue. So accurate, valued, and allocated properly. Which of the following procedures should be performed? Test transaction around the year end to determine whether amounts have been recognized in the correct financial period. So that is more for the cutoff. Right? Test transactions around the year end. For a sample of accruals, recalculate the amount of the accrual to ensure that the amount accrued is correct. Right? So the valuation they are talking so that the amount accrued is correct. Confirm payment of net pay per payroll records to check or bank transfer summary for the accruals on salary. So they are talking about the outstanding accruals, right? Outstanding salaries or so. Right? Confirm payment of net pay per payroll records to check or bank transfer summary for the accruals on salary. For a sample of vouchers, compare the dates with the dates they were recorded in the ledger for application of correct cutoff. See, now my procedure does not ask me for cutoff. They are saying accruals are accurate, valued and allocated correctly. Right, so mainly the amount and whether they have gone in the correct account. Right, so procedure number A and D is a no for me. Why? Right? Because they more, more, both are for cutoff. Confirm payment of net pay per payroll record to check or bank transfer summary for the accrual. No, that won't give me any evidence regarding the valuation. Right. So the correct answer over here is B. Why B? Because that talks about recalculate the amount of the accrual to ensure the amount accrued is correct. So obviously that gives me evidence regarding accurate, valued and allocated. Okay. Right. So we've come halfway through. Right. 10 completed. More 10 to go. Right, question number 11. The draft financial statements of text company for 2018 show the following information. Revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, trade receivable, trade payable. The auditor has confirmed the trade payable payment period with text company staff as 98 days during the current year. Right, confirm the trade payable payment period within 98 days. This was compared with the payment period with the last year records and found out that there has been a decrease of 20 days in an average. Right? So 20 days earlier, now you have to make the payment to the creditor. Which of the following audit procedure will provide the auditor with the assertion of valuation of the trade payables at the year end? Right? So now they are talking about the valuation of the trade payables. Right. Review the trade pay accounts payable listing to identify any large debits which should be recorded as tra trade receivables or deposits. 
right so review the trade pay accounts payable listing to identify any debits which should be shown as receivable so whether any debtor creditor has been set off that is what they are saying but that won't give me evidence regarding valuation right for a sample of vouchers inspect the supporting documentation such as authorized purchase order again i think valuation no evidence i'm getting test transactions around the year end to determine whether amounts have been recognized in the correct financial period so again cut off hai you na know? so year end and correct financial period so obviously the answer has to be d but you can never be confident sometimes you may have to go back to a also if d doesn't look promising compare the amounts owed to a sample of individual suppliers in the trade accounts payable listing with amounts owed to these suppliers in the previous year so they are talking about analytical procedure only but only in this point they are talking about amount and because amount relates to valuation we can say the correct answer over here would be d right the correct answer would be d right coming to the next one question number 12 pay attention right the main operations of pt company are conducting training programs for the newly qualified commerce graduates to make them ready for the jobs available the company owns a two story building in the center of the city which they would where they would attract a lot of students for the courses of watch currently the trainings are provided in house pt has plans to expand and offer online courses as well okay you are the audit senior for pt company for the year ended 2018 and in charge of audit work on non current assets now where from training they've come to non current assets new furniture and white boards have been purchased during the current year the total non current asset shown in the financial statement stands at rupees 289.5 lakh which of the following audit procedures are appropriate to test the valuation assertion for non current assets right so valuation of non current assets ensure disposals are properly accounted for and recalculate the gain loss on disposal so we want to check valuation of non current assets that is mainly the property plant equipment that right. disposals are properly accounted for recalculate the depreciation charge for a sample of assets ensuring that it is being applied consistently and in accordance with nda 16 review the repairs and maintenance expense account for evidence of items of a capital nature review board minutes of pt for evidence of disposals during the year and verify that they are appropriately reflected in the non current assets register agree a sample of additions included in the non current assets register to purchase invoice and the cash book mainly the newly for purchase furniture purchased during the year review physical condition of the non current assets for any sign of damage because if they have been damaged then obviously they will have to write off do the impairment so obviously that is going to affect the valuation right so for checking valuation one the depreciation should also be properly charged and any signs of damage so the impairment should also be properly done right so now what are the options over here 1 2 5 6 1 3 4 6 2 3 4 5 3 4 5 6 6 right so 6 6 5 6 is coming more frequently okay right so one we need to first see whether one is to be included because then obviously c and d would be out and if one is not to be taken then right if it is to not to be taken yes <clears throat> then you have to select from 2 and 3 and if one is to be taken then out of a and b right so ensure disposals are properly accounted for and recalculate the gain loss on disposal so for doing the valuation you obviously have to check the additions and deletions during the year right and the depreciation amortization impairment right so procedure number 1 yes okay right now so procedure number 1 yes so now a and b right what is b recalculate the depreciation charge so obviously only if the depreciation is properly charged then you will have to then the valuation would be proper right and if i look at 3 review the repairs and maintenance expense account i think repairs and maintenance expense account can't give you evidence regarding the valuation as such but mainly okay more would be given an option out of depreciation and repairs and maintenance i would more like to check the depreciation than the repairs and maintenance right so that is why the correct answer over here is going to be a right what is the correct answer 1 2 5 1 6 sample of addition and also the non current assets for any sign of damage right is it clear to everyone right so that is question number 12 now coming to question number 30 right 
the audit team has obtained the following results from the trade receivable circularization of oak company for 2018 right customer balance as per the sales ledger balance as per the customer confirmation comment m company how much is the balance as per sales ledger 225000 customer confirmation 225000 Three lakh fifty thousand, two lakh seventy five thousand invoice raised on twenty eighth of March. Six lakh twenty thousand, four lakh eighty thousand payment made on thirtieth of March. Five lakh thirty five, five lakh thirty five. A balance of forty five thousand is currently being disputed, and one lakh seventy eight thousand no reply. Which of the following statement in relation to the results of the trade receivable circularization is true? Okay, so which is right? no further audit procedure need to be carried out in relation to the outstanding balances of mn company and pn company no further audit procedure false this yes, we will do the sample invoice checking and the others right so we make do further procedures right next one the difference in relation to n and company represents a timing difference and should be agreed to the pre year end invoice right should be agreed as the invoice is raised on 28th of march right so it is before the year end right let us see the next one also the difference in relation to o company represents a timing difference and should be agreed to the pre year end bank statement right so this is regarding a payment which has been done and this is regarding an invoice which has been raised right right so difference should represent should be agreed to pre year end bank statement anyways pre year end bank statement we are going to check in detail okay and due to the non reply the balance with r and company cannot be verified and a different customer balance should be selected and circularized so obviously this is also going to be false right so now the competition remains between b and c right where invoice was raised and where the payment has been made okay now this is more of a concern for the auditor because the invoice has been raised but the balance is not given the customer the amount is not being reflected right in the customers books okay in the debtors books the amount is not being reflected so my, my, maybe it might be bogus revenue recognition being done by the client okay so that is why procedure number d would also right yes procedure number c could also be stated as false and that is why the correct answer over here is going to be b right because this is more of a concern for us if the money is received no problem right payment made 30th march okay but this is more of a concern right question number 14 for the current year audit of beta company for the year ended 2018 yes your manager suggested that we could use computer assisted audit techniques he asked you to plan the audit work on trade receivable the financial statements of beta company showed trade receivable of 243 crore in the current year right so how much of trade receivable 243 crore which of the following procedure could not be performed using computer assisted audit techniques right now with these computer assisted audit techniques is also referred to as the data analytics right so which of the procedure cannot be performed by using cats right so selection of samples so one obviously we can select samples with the help of computers calculation of receivables so obviously calculations can be done with the help of computers production of receivable confirmation letters yes even that can be done with the help of computers so obviously what is remaining is the d1 evaluation of the adequacy of the allowance for irrecoverable receivables right adequacy of the allowance means we are talking about the rdd right the provision for bad and doubtful debts right evaluation of the adequacy of the allowance for the irrecoverable balances so whether the provision is adequate or not can that be checked by computers no for that auditor judgment is required to be applied right so the correct answer for this one is going to be d right so coming to question number 15 top pizza companies operates a large chain of fast food restaurants You are an audit supervisor of Shivam and Associates and are currently preparing the audit program for the audit of Top Pizza's financial statements for 2018. You are reviewing the notes of the last week's meeting between the audit manager and the finance director where two material issues were discussed. One of the issue was on property plant and equipment of the entity. In the past Top Pizza has received negative press reports over the condition of its fast food restaurants with comments suggesting that they are old fashioned and tired looking. 
Therefore, during the year, the company undertook a full review of all its assets and carried out extensive refurbishments to the majority of its restaurants. This review resulted in a significant amount of aging fixtures and fittings being disposed of and a significant amount of capital expenditure was invested in all the remaining restaurants. Which of the following is not a substantive procedure to be used by the auditor to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence on the property, plant and equipment? Right. Which of the following is not a substantive procedure? Right. So, obtain a breakdown of the addition, total the list and agree included in the non-current assets register to confirm the completeness of the fixtures and fitting. So, that is it says check the addition. Select a sample of additions and agree cost to supplier invoice to confirm the valuation. Right. So, sample of addition, agree cost to supplier invoice to confirm valuation looks like a procedure which should be performed. Right, to check for the right substantive procedure which should be performed, obtain a breakdown of addition, total the list and agree with the non-current assets register to confirm the completeness. Okay. Verify rights and obligation by agreeing the additions of fixtures and fittings to a supplier invoice in the name of Top Pizza so that the invoices are in the name of Top Pizza and company. Review the evidence for recalculation of depreciation charge on the additions and disposals made in the year of acquisition according to the company policy. Right. Right. So, what does it say? Review the evidence. So, review, verify rights and obligation again, right? Which is not a substantive procedure. Review the evidence for recalculation of depreciation charge. Will you review the evidence or will you recalculate on your own? Right. Will you review the evidence for recalculation of depreciation or will you do the checking of recalculation on your own? Right. Because obviously depreciation, addition, deletion during the year we will check. So that's a substantive procedure. But how they are saying we'll perform review the evidence for recalculation. No, we will do the recalculation. Right. So that is why this is not a substantive procedure and that is why the correct answer would be D. Okay. Right. Coming to the next one. RK and company is a retailer in stationary items and run 10 shops in and around South Mumbai. In the audit plan prepared for 2018, you have included statistical sampling method for testing the accounts payable balance. You asked your audit senior to review the results of some statistical sampling testing which resulted in 20% of the payable balance being tested. The testing results indicate that there is a 58,000 error in the sample. Rupees 30,000 due to is which is due to invoices not being recorded in the correct period as a result of weak control and additionally there is a one-off error of 28,000 which was made by a temporary clerk. Right, so one is due to invoice weak control and one is due to a one-off error. What would be an appropriate course of action on the basis of these results? The error is immaterial and therefore no further work is required. We would never agree. The effect of the control error should be projected across the whole population. Oh, yes, they are talking about statistical sampling. So, the error is required to be projected to the entire population. RK company should be asked to adjust the payable figure by rupees 58,000. We won't be happy only if they do that much. A different sample should be selected. No, 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 no. This is out only. Right, as these results are not reflective of the population. No. Right, so now B and C. Right. So, RK company should be asked to adjust the payable figure. That is not only the way out as it is statistical sampling. You have to project the error to the entire population. Right. You have to project the error to the entire population. Right. Coming to question number 17. Sula Hotels company operates a number of hotels providing accommodation, ledger facilities and restaurants. You are an audit supervisor of Pi and company conducting the audit of Sula Hotels for 2018. The following information has been brought to your attention. Non-current assets, Sula Hotels Company incurred significant capital expenditure during the year, updating the ledger facilities at several of the company's hotel. Depreciation is charged on all assets monthly on a straight line basis and it is company policy to charge a full month depreciation in the month of acquisition and none in the month of disposal. The rates as per Schedule 2 of the companies are as per Schedule 2 of the Companies Act. Right? So, incurred significant capital expenditure, depreciation is charged on straight line. In the month of addition, full month depreciation. In the month of disposal, no depreciation. 
right the audit team has obtained the following extract of the non current asset register details detailing some of the new ledger equipment acquired during the year right so date of the acquisition description of the asset the total cost of the asset depreciation policy charge for the year and the carrying amount okay right in order to verify the depreciation charge for the year the audit team has been asked to recalculate a sample of the depreciation charges the audit team has also been asked to carry out detailed testing on the valuation of non current assets which of the following correctly calculates the depreciation charge for the new assets for the year ended 2018 and the resultant impact on the non current assets right so we i think you always know it that before mcq is also for an audit paper you always need to keep the calculator with you you can't say it's audit paper law paper where i'll require calculator always it has to be on your desktop right on your desktop is yes, it always has to be on your desk okay right so now talking about the right so you won't have this uh, what you say this luxury in your exams you know to right to create use an excel file but here yes we can take uh, just create the options in an excel file right so what are the numbers that they are talking of over here right so what are the assets first let's take the full cost of the assets 3 lakh 60000 right 3 lakh 60000 right then there is 1 lakh 50000 right then 2 lakh and then 1 lakh 20000 right so 2 lakh and then we also have the 1 lakh 20000 okay right then what does it say for the cost of the asset depreciation policy right charge for the year so what are all these assets right the depreciation policy is 36 months right so all the assets three years straight line so all of them what is the depreciation charge it is 36 months right so all of them say let me divide them by 36 right say first or let me divide them by 3 because that will give me the charge per year right so rather than divided by 36 say i could divide it by equal to this divided by 3 right so this will give me the depreciation charge for the year right this will give me the depreciation charge for the year okay right now what does it say first august so august september october november december january february march so that's eight months second one also full month depreciation in the month of acquisition so again eight months and then november november so november december january february march right november december january february march right so the first two assets it is going to be eight months right so is equal to this divided by 12 because this is for 12 months for the year into 8 right into 12 divided by 8 right that is first one right so control c right then we have the second one then for the next one is equal to this divided by 12 into 5 right november december january february march so into 5 right and then again control c and then we have the this the same one okay right and then what is the total addition this yes, the total cost of depreciation is equal to right it is equal to right the first the second right the, all this in the exams i know with the manually also you'll do it right 157 777 right this is as per our calculation how much should be the charge for depreciation 157 777 and how much is the charge as per their books yes as per they are working 1 lakh 91111 yes 1 lakh 91111 right so depreciation should be 1 lakh 57777 and therefore the assets are under stated right how much should be the depreciation charge should it be 1 lakh 71 or uh, yes should it be 1 lakh 91000 no it should be 1 lakh 57000 right so the correct option over here is a right did everybody get this working so first week divided by 3 right because it's given for 3 years right and then proportionate in the year of addition right depending upon the month of acquisition okay right so that's an interesting question going to take a lot of time so you better do mcqs in the beginning of the paper and also at a very good speed
okay right coming to the last three you are an audit manager with shah and associates and are currently performing the final audit of kapoor industries for 2018 the company is a manufacturer and retailer of shoes and boots the audit senior has provided you with the following information from the review of the current year and the prior year audit files to complete the audit of the payroll right so again a payroll question kapoor industries has 3450 full time employees and 50 part time employees one of the product line was discontinued and on 1st may 10% of the full time staff and all the part time employees were made redundant this was for immediate effect 10% of the employees were promoted and they received a 8% rise in their salary i think this is very similar to a question which we've already seen there the bonus given was 8000 right they've drafted a very similar question earlier also right in the same paper if we'll see early above right did we see one particular question of this type before also yes this one see over the course of the year sales level met performance fixed bonus of 8000 you are an audit senior right 350 employees 10% was redundant remaining was given 5% rise right and what was the question over here the following evidence and which is the most reliable right so here the question was regarding most reliable now let us see what they are saying but similar question right at least the initial drafting is similar over the course of the year sales level met performance targets which resulted in fixed bonus of 15000 being paid to each employee now which of the following are substantive analytical procedures to be performed to complete the audit work for wages and salaries of kapoor industries so there it was ki which is the most reliable evidence you give the sequence now here they are saying which is the substantive analytical procedure to be performed right so which is the substantive analytical procedure all right trace and agree the total wages and the salary expense as per the payroll system to the draft financial statements of kapoor industries right so total salaries and wages it says that of the payroll system you can check it with the financial statements recalculate the gross and the net pay for a sample of full time and part time employees agree to payroll records and then investigate any discrepancies right so calculate on a sample basis and then check if there are any discrepancies right what are they talking about to be performed to check audit work of the wages and salaries of kapoor industries substantive analytical compare the current year total payroll expense to the prior period and investigate any significant difference so i think 520 says that this is one of the analytical procedure to be followed compare with the previous year right and perform a proof in total calculation and so now you develop an independent expectation and compare expected expense to actual expense within the draft financial statements so rather than directly just checking numbers as they have told in one better option is that you compare perform a proof in total calculation and compare expected to actual so one it says compare with the previous year and second it says you compare with the expected with the actual right so procedure number 3 and 4 right so that is d1 right so again in this one what they are saying compare when you read the four rather than checking directly total salary expenses with the draft financial statements one looks like a no at least comparing expected with actual is more sensible so once one is out that means a and b is out okay then after that compare the uh, second one is what now recalculate the gross and net pay for a sample of full time and part time employees agree to payroll records and investigate any discrepancy i don't think this to be an recalculation so this is not an analytical procedure right you are not performing an analytical procedure that is why two is also out right so that is why two goes out and the final answer over here is d okay right next one You are the audit manager responsible for the audit of AB and Company. AB specializes in the manufacture of electrical goods for domestic use such as iron, kettle, toaster, vacuum cleaner, coffee maker. The external audit for 2018 is at the review and finalization stage. The draft financial statements show a profit after tax of 52.5 crore and total assets of 190 crore. The following issue has been noted by the audit senior. The company has set up a provision of warranty costs of 3.545 crore in the financial year. These costs are not deductible for tax purpose until AB pays the claim. So this is talking about the deferred tax, 
right timing differences you have permanent time timing right these costs are not deductible for tax purposes until ab pays the claim the company has not made any adjustment for the provision in the financial statements the tax rate is 20% which of the audit procedure which of the audit evidence would not be appropriate to be added in the audit working paper relating to the above provision which would not be appropriate okay right copy of the assumptions and the calculations from the management to arrive at the figure of 3.45 crore would you include this in your working paper right would you include it in your working paper okay how that amount of 3.45 crore has come will you include it in the working paper yes so what does it say which would not be appropriate to be added in the working paper the provision amount seems to be material since 6.6% since 6 of the profit after tax auditor needs to consider qualifying the audit report right so should the auditor qualify the company has made a provision of 3.45 crore these costs are not deductible for tax purposes okay right so it's a timing difference let's read the next one calculation of the deferred tax asset as per in as 12 income tax since there is a deductible tax for temporary difference arising on the provision so temporary timing difference arising on the provision should this be included in your working paper yes and written representation point from the management of ab confirming the amount of provision in respect of warranty will you take a <clears throat> written representation from the management for this one yes so which is the one which will not be included in your working paper the b one right so which is the correct answer over here b is the correct answer right so will you take written representation yes will you ask for the dta working yes will you check for the assumptions and calculation yes so this all will be included so the b point will not be included and there is no working paper in that they have written something irrelevant only and the acd if you look it's at least some working paper that is coming over there some evidence okay last one your audit firm has been appointed as auditor of red white limited a manufacturing entity the year under audit is 2018 while verifying account heads with high risk areas like revenue and inventory you identify certain issues for which you are not provided satisfactory replies and documents by the client at the same time red white company approaches you to change the scope of the engagement right so verifying accounts of high risk areas like revenue and inventory you identify certain areas for which you are not provided satisfactory replies and documents by the client revenue inventory no getting satisfactory replies and documents at the same time red white approaches you to change the scope of engagement they give you the reason that they have misunderstood the scope of the assignment earlier what course of action would you adopt in this situation okay this oh we never knew that you're going to ask so much except the revised terms of engagement as the change is resultant of a change in circumstance which affect entity requirement or misunderstanding concerning the nature of service of service originally requested and considered or forced as reasonable basis for requesting change in the engagement accept the revised terms of engagement and record justification of the change in the engagement letter disagree to the revised terms and withdraw from the engagement why because revenue and inventory is the concern so accept accept next one disagree and applicable law regulation and determine whether there is any obligation either contractual or otherwise to report the circumstance to other parties such as tcwg owners or regulator disagree to the revised terms of engagement and have your terms of increase fees since the scope of engagement has changed so our last one is the filler and the question only doesn't arise now a b c and out of that also have to decide whether i have to accept or dis uh, disagree whether agree or disagree right now what does it say see otherwise if there would have been a change in terms of engagement say fixed assets or inventory data not available limitation on scope you would have issued qualified disclaimer issued a report but you have high risk areas like revenue and inventory so probably there is an indication of fraud right so obviously this is more towards the c point right disagree to the revised terms and withdraw from the engagement Why? Because high risk areas of revenue and inventory, right? Such are the part communicate to TCWG. So this is again our case study time, right? So again, there is no question of accepting. But had we got to accept, then we would have taken the first point, okay? But we are not going to accept the engagement, 
Right, so that completes our discussion for one more set of MCQs. I hope you have been with me through the entire discussion. Right, I'll be putting further more discussion on the ICAI MCQs. Right, I wish you all the very best and keep studying well. Yes, thank you so much.